Good afternoon, and welcome back to The Pulse with Willie and Al. How's it going today, brother? Oh, not bad, man. Not bad. How about you? Dude, I, I'm i doing well today. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling like we got a lot of good stuff to be able to talk about. And yeah, I'm excited to jump into this this week. Yeah, one of us has a, a baseball team that is still in playoff contention. The other has uh, thrown in the towel with my Red Sox, so... Good. Good. Yeah, listen, I mean, those things are going to happen. It just... <laughs> Hopefully, when they, yeah. When they shut down Devers for the year, I was like, okay. Now you're feeling I see it, what yeah. What doing here. Okay. Yeah. Hey, thanks. thanks for coming. Yeah, right. that, that's, that's a very tough thing to be able to go through, so... Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, we got a lot to be able to talk about. Not, not to mention, like, everything going on with baseball, but the, the absolute craziness that's ensuing in the NFL right now. Uh, it's, it's just kind of wild, but, uh, yeah. let's get rolling, right? Let's jump right into baseball here, man. This wild card race has really just taken the league by storm. It really has. You got teams rising, teams falling. Uh, so let's dive in with the AL. I mean, the Yankees have just furthered their lead, uh, in the AL East to what six games now, right? Is it? Yeah. I mean, it's just, I mean, they, they went eight and two in their last 10, which is just, nuts and well baltimore is just like an absolute free fall mode right uh they dropped seven of their last 10 it just it looked really really ugly um yeah they they finally dfa baltimore finally dfa kimbrell and uh i, I laughed pretty hard at that <laughs> yeah it's like well took you guys uh not that long to figure out what you got with that well so. you you probably were thinking like okay now they got a chance to win the world series like <laughs> i don't know they're they're in such a funk right now yeah i don't know if they can they can pull the nose up. I mean, if they don't look out, like they could end up playing in the wild card game, and that would not be what they want to do. Uh, oh, I think they are at this point because they're what six out with like six to play. Uh, yeah, six to play. Well, so. there's only one of the play in games. The bottom two teams are going to be the wild card play in, right? Like the oh, yeah, that that actual yeah. game, but. I mean, that's just the Yanks are are feeling like they're they're in firm control there. They're not going to relinquish that at all. Um, Cleveland, no. I mean, they've locked up the AL Central, but I mean, the story of the AL Central has to be the Royals, who are they're free falling worse than Baltimore. Like, I mean, that Vinny Pasquiano injury really fucked them. Yeah, that, yeah, like, really. That was really kind of their downfall. And and this is the crazy thing about it. Like, yeah, okay, as of what yesterday they had dropped seven in a row, which is is really yeah. bad at this time of year. Um, but like the Tigers are just surging right now. I mean, oh, man. it's just I mean, they just keep plugging along. It seems like they're gonna make the playoffs now. Like it's their it's it's basically they're playing against destiny. So if they don't yeah, make they it, really are. it's it's kinda on them if they don't make it, but um, you even know, the twins, the twins are one back, like it, it, even the Mariners, like the Mariners are a game and a half back for all that we've done to shit on them. Yeah, I know. I just, I don't know. Like I, the thing is when you get a team like the Tigers that come in there, I feel like it's a story of, you don't know what you don't know. Right. And, and when yeah. you, when you get in there and I know that's a tautology, right. But being able to, to like get in there. Uh, and play when you don't have the fear of being afraid. It's very different uh, than going in there and knowing how how deep a situation can be, uh, yeah. and, and and how much there is at risk. Um, I just I don't know, man. The, like you mentioned, the Twins they're still there, but I, I feel like I mean they aren't out of it yet, but I feel like they're on the outside looking in. Uh, yeah, they've also lost seven of their last ten, and they are just kind of going in the opposite direction. And yeah. that's really let Detroit, who <laughs> really since the All Star break have just been playing like gangbusters. Yeah, and, yeah. And Detroit's won seven of ten. And yeah. I mean, it's just and like Scooball, like <laughs> riding him hard. He's 
He's yeah, pitching lights tomorrow, out, man. When is it? When is it going to fall off? Cy Young unanimously. Yeah. Like, there's yeah, no yeah. other pitcher in the AL that you're going to give it to. Uh, I mean, this is the thing. Lugo was there, but he's just he's got the wins, but he doesn't have the other stats. And Scooball just he's got the ERA, the strikeouts, the wins. It, it just and he's looked dominant too. That's the other piece. Uh, same thing for I, for sale, right? Yeah, I, I do think in the American League, I don't think it's going to happen, but I think you're going to see Emmanuel Clays get some first place votes. You you had I mentioned do. that, yeah. I do, because he the season that he is having is just, just insane. He's going to mm-hmm. be the first closer to ever lead the league in saves three years in a row. Like, that that just doesn't happen. Like, and he, his ERA, I think, is under one mm-hmm. for a closer, and it just, he's, like I said, I, I he's not going to win it. He's not having like an Eric Gagne type season, but like no, but I think he's gonna get some votes. And it's very impressive to see something like that, like you mentioned. Um, yeah. And I know, listen, like we didn't mention it, but the, in in the West, the Astros, like they've they've done enough to be able to to further themselves in that division and and kind of put a lot of a, a big gap in between them and the Mariners. Um, but definitely going to be exciting within the the next six yeah. games that are played because. Yeah, and I mean, I, I kind of joke about the Sox. I mean, the Sox are three and a half out. Like they're not. I mean, they're not doing much, but like they're still mm-hmm. mathematically in it. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, with six games to go, it still doesn't feel feel terrible. Um, yeah. Well, listen. Let Let's shift to the the National League real quick, and this is a bit disappointing for me. Just not, not because my Braves are playing poorly, but just. Uh, because they're, I really don't think they are playing that poor as of recent. Uh, but just the Mets have been epically good, not only in September yeah. where they've gone sixteen and five, but they have the best record since I think the All Star break in the majors. I mean, yeah. they're just yeah, the last the last yeah. like eighty or so games, like they've just been playing off. They've been on fire. Yeah, yeah. And now, I mean, even to look this last week, them stealing games off Philly who almost locked down the division. I realize they don't have much to play for and this and that, but I just look at that and that's oh, Philly. Of... Philly clinched the division last night. Uh, did they clinch last night? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah, they did. Um, it just, it's interesting because those games actually might mean something and give the Mets a little bit of confidence that you don't want them to have going into the playoffs. Yeah. It's, I mean that's a that's a piece to really think about. And this wild card race, as you look at it, I mean, let's go through the, the rest of this, right? Um, it's basically they're they're facing the Braves for a three game series that is probably gonna determine who gets into the playoffs and who doesn't. Uh, yeah. or yeah. they both could end up there if they end up not they're not gonna split it because it's three games, but there's a chance for both of them to still get in if the Diamondbacks decide, hey, listen, we're uh you know, we don't want to, you know. Well, and I think, too, like, Atlanta, respectfully, they need to sweep this series mathematically because they're a game and a half out of yep. the last wild card spot. So they, they need to sweep this series. Yeah. Like, you can take two or three, and that's fine. But, like, you, you have to at least win this series. Yeah, a sweep would be, yeah, a sweep would be very nice. Sweep would be ideal. Yep. You have to win two of three. But the, if you don't. They're not through the trees after that that point. They no. still got to go when they're playing the Royals, who we've talked about. They've been in free fall, and that's wonderful and great. But at the same time, they're also vying to still get in. <laughs> You know, it's yeah. So it's it's gonna be crazy over this next week of baseball. Um, I mean, you got the Brewers as well, right? Like they've clinched the Central. Um, they're gonna play the Mets the last three games of the season. So it's not like the yeah. Mets get an easy path either. I mean, they go from the Phillies to the Braves to the Mets. Uh, the Phillies, yeah. Braves to the Brewers. That's not that's not an easy path. They're they're playing all playoff teams there. So, um. I just I don't know. It's uh it, it's going to be really interesting. And then I mean the, the West has just been I don't know. It's been kind of interesting to me because it almost seems uh like the Dodgers I know they're did they clinch the division last night or they haven't yet. Yeah, Dodgers have already clinched. Okay. Well. All right. So like they were it seemed like they were kind of like teasing uh, that oh okay, well maybe we're not going to win the division and the Padres were just absolutely crushing the last 10 games they played i mean it's just it almost had that tease feel like oh well what if what if the dodgers don't 
don't clinch the division? What are we going to things... be looking at then? Hmm? Well, things to like watch for this last week of the season. I know the Phil. I'm sorry, and I I'm sorry, I misspoke. The Phillies have clinched a playoff spot. They have not uh, clinched okay. the division yet, technically. Uh, they they win tonight. They're they clinch. Yeah, they get it. Yeah. Um, but things to watch out for the last week of the season. There's a three way race for best record in the majors, which means you get to host the World Series. Yeah. I mean, the Phillies and the Dodgers have the same record right now, and the Yankees are a game back. So, <laughs> I mean, that's that's kind of stuff nuts. to look out for. I forgot about that actually. So that's very interesting. Um, yeah. And especially in the National League too, like with the Phillies and Dodgers, like they're probably going to see each other. You, you would think in the NLCS, and having home field matters. Not if the it Mets does. have something to say about that. Um, and, yeah. and the thing is, like, if the Braves get in, it's not an easy out for them. Uh, they still have a decent lineup. They still yeah. have some decent pitching. But I think the way the Mets are playing right now, like, they're a team that they have that feel of the 2021 Braves, to me, at least. Uh I, I think your best hope for Atlanta is in the wild card round. They play Milwaukee. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's and that's <laughs> kind of what, like, if you're in the National League wild card, that's your best bet to advance. Mm-hmm. Is you got to hope you get Milwaukee in round one. Like, and Milwaukee's good, but, like, they... They can be beaten. Yeah. Especially yeah, by sure. an injured nobody's, Braves team, yeah. Nobody's really taking them seriously that they're going to do anything in the playoffs. Right. So... Yeah. You're correct on that. I mean, I don't, I don't take the Dodgers seriously either that they're going to do anything in the playoffs. But well, that's, that's just me. That's the other piece of it too. Uh, it's just kind of scary. But let, while we're on the Dodgers, I mean, let's let's for a minute talk about Otani because, like, oh well, man, I just I, I want I want to give you this as a platform to kind of you know spew your your beef on this because I know that like what he's been able to do this season has been historic. He's been paid historically. Uh, but he's produced yeah. historically too, and I want to give you a chance to talk about how special that truly is. And like to think that like without Otani, I don't know what this Dodgers team looks like because they just Freeman was gone for an extended absence because of a, a family issue. Betts broke his hand and was gone for two months. Like it, like the the starting pitching, Glasnow being out, Yamamoto being out, uh, Kershaw not really pitching well and being out. Walker Bueller being out like it just like they've just been hit with so many injuries and Otani like the thing that's really propelled them was once Betts got hurt Otani moving to the leadoff spot mm-hmm. and what he did to get to 50 50 that six for six game as a leadoff hitter yeah. was just insane yeah Which, yeah and like in the thing too I was reading an article and I want to say this was the athletic I was reading it um that Otani started working on his base stealing this season because he wasn't pitching. And he, and this is a true quote, said he needed to burn off energy somehow. <laughs> so him just burning, so him stealing 50 bases was just kind of on a whim. Like, yeah, I got to do something. Like, right. Which is insane. Which it is, is man. Insane. It is. Yeah. He's just, he's super impressive. Uh, you know, I, I had to wake up early to see the end of, of that game. Uh, but what he does is just, it's very impressive. And it's, um, you know, no one's done it before him. So, yeah. Also, can we just talk about real quick, the last homer he hit, he hit off a position player, which I think that ball is still in orbit. <laughs> because you can tell too, because it was, uh, it was like 17 to four. And the guy just leaves one hanging because, again, position player is what it is. And the guy doesn't even turn around. He just, like, shakes his head. He's like, well, what do you what do you want me to do? Yeah, that one's gone. And, <laughs> and the fact, too, like, Skip Schumacher had first base open and was just like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's pitch to him. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's Schumacher do it. After the game, like, well, yeah, we got to try to get him out. And I'm like, yeah, but. He had been five for five up at that point. Like, <laughs> you're not getting him out, man. Yes. <laughs> he's just, he's seeing it. He's seeing beach balls coming in there, man. It's so easy yeah. for him to hit. I and mean, then the next night after, he had another one and stole another base. Yeah. It like, just, I mean. Like, there's, he's going to win MVP unanimously. Mm-hmm. Like, we, I shout out to Lindor, who's having a monster season, but like, respectfully that's just not happening man yeah like 
and to think too, like he's, I, I don't know where actually where you fall in analytics in baseball. I find them fascinating, but the, the wins above replacement stat, I think is, is a truly fascinating stat. He alone has accounted for eight and a half wins above a replacement player this year. Yeah, that is insane. Which is one of the best seasons, one of the better seasons of all time. Yeah, that that's insane. Like I, I, I don't remember it being a statistic when I was younger. I remember it coming in. I don't I don't know exactly when they started tracking that, but I I don't remember it being like something that people really cared a lot about when I was growing yeah. up. But then all of a sudden it was talked about a lot more in in baseball and uh it it definitely shows how much an individual can have an impact on the game. Uh Well, I think too like I think too, if you like go back and like you look and, and like war's not the end all be all like, but I, I think it is a fascinating stat when you go back and you like, look at it, you go back and look like, look at like previous MVP seasons. And it kind of tells a real story about like guys that won based on like war doesn't tell the whole story, but it, it, it tells enough of a story that you can be like, okay, like, mm-hmm. This guy actually was is truly a special season. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's so. been he's been incredible. Well, I, I mean, and what's wild? Yeah, what's wild too? And I know this is an outside shot. Like, there's six games left. He needs seven homers and five steals. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but there's like there's a there's a sliver of a chance he could be 60, could 60. 60, 60. Yeah, and that would just be really special to see that like i i yeah. didn't think i'd ever see 50 50 in my lifetime uh and also shout out to jose ramirez real quick who's on the cusp of a 40 40 season which hasn't which doesn't happen often for the record yeah uh but i never thought i'd see a 50 50 season in my lifetime like what Acuna mm. did last year i was like oh man that was special i'm not gonna see anything like that again and then otani was like hey Hold my beer. Watch yeah. this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Let me just like let me show you. When I think about it, like when I think about it when I'm when I'm older, this is like a season that I will I'll I'll honestly never really forget because like I just the stuff that I've watched him do this season, time in and time out, like just yeah. Yeah. To get to 4040, he had a walk-off grand slam. Yeah. Like the, the dude just has a flair for the dramatic and I'm excited for him to be in the playoffs. Yeah. It's, I, I feel like he's going to make waves in the playoffs and uh, definitely win some games for the Dodgers for sure. Uh, him batting lead off is just, <laughs> that's crazy. You never see a guy that can hit 50 home runs batting lead off. Uh, but yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Anything else you want to cover in baseball before we chop it up with the NFL? No, I am just, uh, I'm excited for the last week of the season, a uh, lot to play for, and uh, it's just going to be me watching a lot of MLB, uh, a lot of games Yeah, late into the night. So. It's, de- it's definitely going to be great. So, yeah. Uh, well, listen, let's, uh, let's transition real quick into the NFL, because there's, listen, there's a lot of games we could talk about this week, especially with all the upsets that happened, uh, but there's really three games that I want to talk about and kind of break down uh, that I think really showed us a lot this past week. Uh, the first one I want to start with is Baltimore at Dallas. And, like, listen, Baltimore, again, off to a great start in the game. They played very well, but it just felt like they couldn't finish. Like, <laughs> it yeah. seemed like, like, okay, they win the game. But they thought the job was done in the first half. What are they doing? I, I saw, I was listening to a podcast, and I can't, I think it was Bill Simmons I was listening to. Uh, he was like, Baltimore's like a great starting pitcher. Mm-hmm. Good for seven innings. You can't have him closing game. It, like, can't close the game, though. And that's kind of what Baltimore is, man. It's it's rough. Yeah, like, it's, it's I, felt that way. Point, mm-hmm. I at one point turned that game off because I was like, it's twenty eight to six. I'm I'm out on this game. Like I got, I just have better shit to do. Yeah, and uh, I was wrong. I was wrong. I like tuned back in like an hour later. I was like, oh, oh, this is a game. Weird. And then yeah, I mean, the other thing I want to mention too is like <laughs> Baltimore, and I kind of called it. I kind of called it that. I said Baltimore could run for four hundred yards on the ground against against Dallas. Just because yeah. Dallas, you can like having Henry back there and having Lamar 
And knowing what they're capable of, I said, well, listen, Henry could go off for 200. I'm sorry. I, I said 300, but uh, yeah. which they weren't that far off, I don't believe, of doing no. that. Derrick Henry ran for what, 150 something yards? Lamar almost had 100 on the ground, finished with like 81 or so. Um, and Lamar had the game winning, like, uh, run to steal it on that nifty. That, yeah. I, I don't know if you saw, like, the fake he did, but, like, he put it in the guy's, like, chest. And then took it out. Yeah, pulled it out. He's which he's very sneaky with that. Uh, yeah, so he fools a lot of people. The line running that way to chase the the runner, and then yeah. Lamar was already six yards up the field before somebody realized that he had the ball. You, you know what? You know what's crazy? Like he's he's very good and very fun to watch. Uh, but but Dallas, like, listen, good good job, Dallas, like trying to overcome. Uh, you know, forge the comeback and all of that, but. Like those deficits are too much to overcome. You just can't do that. It's it's like, and it's not on Dak and the offense in my mind. This defense, this is what we've heard about. Oh, Dallas has a great defense. All this, Micah Parsons, this, Micah Parsons, that. Dude, shut up on your podcast and go out and get a yeah. sack, man. You guys yeah, have totally, one sack yeah, in totally. three games. What are you doing, dude? What are you doing? I just yeah I I don't I get it, be man. Shit, if you let up 274 yards on the ground, ever, I, I be. ever, these teams no. they just know it's it's almost like just keep running it, man. Like you just know that you can keep running it against Dallas, and that's the problem. You look at the teams they've played not only this season but go, dating back to last season too. What's the way you beat Dallas? Remember when Dallas headed yeah. up to Buffalo last year? They ran them over the, right on the ground. Josh Allen yep. didn't need to do much through the air. Uh, wild stat about Dallas defensively. In the last two games, uh, quarterbacks have a total of eight incompletions against them. My God. Yeah. And eight that's eight Lamar, who usually isn't like the best in terms of completion percentage. Yeah, Lamar had three incompletions. Yeah, that's yeah. insane. That's wild. Yeah. You know, th this is just my opinion. Because I've we've seen three weeks so far of football, and uh, of course we can make grand, uh, grand have grand opinions about this stuff. But my thoughts after seeing this game was neither of these teams are that good. No, uh, I, I just and I don't know. No. Maybe it was just them playing against each other. But I've seen Baltimore not be good against in two games this season. You know, okay, yeah. they played all right against Kansas City. They. But I thought they could have played much better. They played all right, and then they lose to Vegas. Uh, that like, Vegas game, ten, you play that game ten times. They win that game nine times. That, yeah, that was but, a weird. Game. But I, I heard this. I heard this from Shannon Sharp, and it was kind of interesting. Like you don't accept anything in a win that you won't accept in a loss. And I really thought that was like an interesting quote because when you it has a lot of meaning behind it. But, like, the stuff that they did in that win, it didn't feel good. It yeah. didn't feel good at all. It's not like they're walking out of there like, yeah, we went to Big D and crushed them. No. you Like, what did you guys do? Okay, you yeah. ran the ball and, and did all of that stuff effectively, and you put up all these points, and then you just let them right back in the game. That doesn't feel good. And it's I'm telling you, the offensive line is a problem in Baltimore. Yes, they were able to run the ball and do all of that stuff against Dallas. Dallas sucks. Wait till they start playing better teams that know how to get after the pass, you know, after after the quarterback and blow up the run. These teams are not that good. And yeah. Dallas, I just, I, I don't know, man. Like may, maybe it's because Baltimore's defense is severely lacking. We've talked about that in past weeks with McDonald gone. I, I don't know, man. I, I just, my thoughts are that neither of these teams are that good. Yeah, and I think too right now, like yeah, they're they're playing teams that are kind of a little soft on defense, and they're yeah. still kind of getting their face kicked in. Like they're gonna start playing better teams, and like yeah, yeah, I don't know, like them trying to run for two hundred and seventy yards on like Pittsburgh's defense right now, like that's not happening. Good luck, good luck. Yeah. We saw what happened when the Chargers played Pittsburgh this week, and J.K. Yeah. Dobbins, the stud that he is, yeah, it was it was real bad. So. Uh, before we get into this next game, I just want to ask, did you see the meme? You know, that NFL meme site that we use. Did you see yeah. the one with 
Stroud and Darnold hugging in the center. Sure did. <laughs> sure did. Oh it my god. Happy. It was really good. Um for those of you that don't know, you got to check it out. But uh basically making a parody on what happened between Stroud and Caleb Williams the week before of, of saying like, "Hey, don't take that many hits and stuff like that." Uh but Houston at Minnesota. Also for the record, yeah. that's sound advice. That is sound advice. Yeah, it is. That it is. is. And people were tr- were trying to do like the oh, he big brothered him or whatever. Whatever, no. man. Like Stroud is not that dude. He's not, yeah. man. No, he's Just don't take that many hits. Yeah, man. he's trying to help him. He's trying to help him elongate his career in the NFL and last past yeah. his rookie season. Um. Okay, so Houston at Minnesota, right? Like, this to me was just a dismantling of a team that, that, I mean, we talked about it. We thought they were pretty good. I mean, but Minnesota is for real. They've now beaten the Giants, which I, screw you, dude. I can see you smirking when I say that. But, like, okay, so they beat the Giants, but they beat San Francisco and now Houston. They've scored yeah, the second no. most points in the league with Darnold at the helm. And go ahead, share share with the folks about your guillotine decision you had to make. Boy, I so I picked up Sam Darnold as a joke after week one because I was like, you know what? I need a backup quarterback because I just like, I don't know what I'm going to get with Purdy this year. And uh, I decided not to start Sam Darnold. And, uh, you know, Minnesota played the early game. And I looked at how many points he had after throwing for four touchdowns. And I was so mad that there was a world where I was going to be eliminated from guillotine league because I didn't start Sam Darnold. And I was, and I, that was going to be it for my, that was going to be it for me. I yeah. was just going to take the off ramp. I'm well, done. I'm well, out. well, listen, uh, so the question I've got for you is what is it going to take for you to start believing in Sam Darnold? I, I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I don't know what to think anymore, man. I don't know. Like I thought that I knew this league and I, 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 I don't, I don't know everything. What's up is down. What's down is up. Andy Dalton's a thing again, for yeah. some reason. Like, <laughs> Sam Arnold's a thing. Malik yeah. Willis is a competent quarterback. I'm like what? Are, what is I, happening? I know, I, well, I, yeah, I don't know. I will tell you that your second father uh, was on TV talking about uh, that. Everyone in the league loves Sam Darnold and has liked him as a quarterback, except the Jets. Uh, Bill Belichick, yeah. by the way. Yeah, no, yeah. I know. Yeah, okay. I know. So he, uh, I, I think it's a thing, man. Like, really, like, they, Kevin O'Connell, I tip my hat to him, man. What he's been able to do, they lost, unfortunately, their cornerback room got hit really hard in the offseason. Um, yeah, straight up. Yeah, it's, it, it just, it, it was really rough. They've had some injuries. They've had to kind of figure some things out. People were worried about JJ McCarthy, but this team has figured it out and they're playing very well. Stefan Gilmore, they bring him in on defense. He's playing well. He had a nice pick on Sunday. Aaron um, Jones was a big free agent signing for them too. That I, I don't think we can discount. Like yeah. he, he just runs the ball hard. He's a good locker room guy as well. Yeah. He understands protections very well. He felt yeah. he came back with an axe to grind as after he felt like Green Bay un, underappreciated him in free agency. And Ty Chandler's no joke, man. I mean, people yeah. were worried at the beginning of the year, myself included, about what is this team going to look like with Justin Jefferson here? I, 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 you know, with Sam Darnold throwing him the ball, he's done well. Turns out, good. turns out he didn't have a Justin Jefferson level talent, talented receiver in ever, New York. ever, yeah, or ever. Yeah. Yeah. And he doesn't um, have Jordan Addison still been injured. TJ Hawkinson isn't back yet. Yeah. This team could get a lot better in that and, time. And I, and I thought too, with Minnesota in the off season, when uh, Daniel Hunter left, I was like, Oh man, that's a huge. Yeah. Like, and I was like, boy, that, that really hurts them defensively. But like Brian Flores is just, He's figuring it out. There's a, there's a clip where CJ Stroud's just sitting on the bench. I think it was after he got pulled and he just, he had the look of shell shock. Like, I don't know what I just what happened. To yeah. Me. Like what just happened, dude? And that's, that's Brian Flores on defense, man. Like yeah. with this t- team, like he just, they blitz a lot. They they're fast. They have coverages that like clearly quarterbacks I've never seen before. And they're, yeah, they're just humming along, man. Yeah, they really are. Uh, the next one, uh, Kansas City at Atlanta. Now, th- this was, for me, this was equal parts about Kansas City and Atlanta. Because for me, listen, Atlanta has shown now that they can hang. And I I really like that. Once by beating Philly, 
and now going toe to toe with Kansas City, who uh, it just appears that Kansas City is. Yes, they're the reigning world champs. I understand that two times, but it seems like teams are starting to close the gap with them. Uh, the INT that Cousins had, I didn't feel was his fault. Like he had pressure in his face all night and made some really yeah. good throws. That one just, you know, it, sometimes it happens. The guy ended up hitting his hand. If if Cousins makes a bad read, okay. But this wasn't a bad read. This was a yeah. hand hit the ball, flipped it up, interception. But Kansas City, listen, if I'm Kansas City, I'm starting to get slightly concerned. Like like I mentioned, teams seem to be bridging the gap with them. They really do. Yeah. I just, I'm, well, I'm curious your thoughts on this. I, I think too what I think can on that last on that last like drive that you know Atlanta didn't end up scoring on Kansas City got away with some pass interference in that end zone man like yeah. they did like and I'm like okay take that <laughs> aside like Kirk Cousins for you know a quarter and a half looked great yeah uh, and then. He just doesn't have an offensive line, man. Like, they are really good at he's got an offensive line that's built to run the ball. Yeah. Not not pass protect as well as we would hope. And that's something which that is, they need there. Which is cool when you can get six yards of carry on first down, but like they weren't. When it's you know, when it's third and seven, like you can't Yeah. It's kind of tough. Yeah. It is. It is. I the good thing is that they play in the NFC South. Um, Atlanta does so there that division's gonna be weird and up for grabs the whole season. I don't know with uh, Andy Dalton there, who knows now? Um, yeah. But with the Chiefs and the Chiefs though, like they I, I think we've quickly figured out that Xavier Worthy is kind of a gadget guy. Yeah. You haven't really seen him since week one. Uh because teams could didn't really scout him, but now everybody has the report on him. Uh, and he's kind of a gadget guy. Um it's just Carson Steele running right now. Who was a rookie? Yeah, uh, and, and Rasheed Rice doing all the heavy lifting. Yeah, I mean Rasheed Rice is definitely the unquestioned number one. Uh, they're going to have to lean more on Kelsey. They they are, and that's coming. Uh, they did sign Kareem Hunt, who I ended up. You'll see, I snagged in a lot of my fantasy leagues because he knows the system. He's very familiar with it. And yeah. listen, man, like Andy Reid. Uh, listen, Pacheco being out is going to hurt them. Because he's the engine that makes that team go when it comes to the running game. Um, but, you know, we're, we'll we'll see going forward. We'll see how it ends up happening. Yeah. Um, now, I didn't mention it before, but I feel like it needs to be brought up now. Guys, the title of this episode is number 56, Good Teams Take Their Licks. And the reason <laughs> that we have that as the name is because there were some other games that were very interesting <laughs> this week in the NFL. Yeah. And, I mean, let's start. Carolina beating Las Vegas. Like, what? What? Yeah. Uh, if you had in your – I did not have in my 2024 NFL bingo card, Sam um, – not Sam Darnold, other weird quarterback. Yeah. Uh, it, Andy Dalton being the first quarterback of the season to throw for 300 yards and three touchdowns in a game – yeah, Didn't have that on my video card. Nope, not against Vegas. Um, and were you? I don't know about you, but like, did the hair stand up on the back of your neck when you saw that Antonio Pierce post game press conference? Well, I think it's <sighs> where he was talking about business decisions. <laughs> I, I think that's dumb. I, I think that's dumb because like it's a blowout game. Like you want guys diving over the middle, getting hurt. Like that's. I, Ah, man, like that's... Yeah, I just, I don't know. I feel like he knows it more than I do, but I just, to me, I wasn't as concerned about the the play, but I was more concerned that, like, when he said it, I was like, oh, is he talking to me? <laughs> and I know and I know that Crosby got hurt, too, for, for Vegas. Yeah. Which, I, once he was gone, like, defensively... They got the, Christian yeah, Wilkins, but, yeah, it's tough. It's tough. Yeah. Yeah, the, the Raiders are just kind of a kind of a shell like any news on yeah. that by the way on how he's going to be or... uh day to day right now yeah that's kind of tough oh. um well also like i know we had mentioned it before but P pittsburgh beating the chargers like kind of surprising uh you know the pittsburgh defense uh to me like i i don't know their offense is suspect to me 
Their defense, though, they've given up 26 points through three games. Like, that's insane. I'm going to say a thing. I don't think their offense is a suspect. This was the first week they I felt like they kind of asked Pittsburgh, that is, asked Fields to do a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Now, he had the one interception, and I don't – that was a weird kind of off the hands one. Yeah, and I and, and just like you, I the ones that are off the hands, that's there's not much you could do with that. But I think the thing was like he didn't really take any sacks. He was pretty accurate with the ball. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I don't know. When I say suspect, I mean like okay. So Arthur Smith, what is he known for? R- running the ball. Uh, yeah, he's, Run, yeah. R- yeah, just just keep running the ball. I've I've watched the Najee Harris experiment work out so far, and it it doesn't seem to be working great for a team that was built to just literally run the ball. It doesn't seem like they're doing it that effectively. Yes, I know they've got fields, and yes, I know quarterback rushing gets factored into how a team rushes and stuff. I get that, but when you talk about a team lining up and trying to run the ball from the running back position, they don't seem to be doing it that effectively. And I don't know. That's just my opinion of what I'm seeing. It's a lot of like, oh yeah, they get one or two yards. That's you're not going to beat a lot of teams doing that. Yeah, they, I mean, they ran for 114 yards on 31 carries. Yeah, but like, but in yeah. addition to that, quarterback rushing is is factored into that, and that's the thing that's concerning to me. Is like, okay, yeah. if, if Justin Fields runs for 50 yards, well, then that number shrinks even lower on those yards per carry. It just yeah, I don't know. The Chargers, I feel like they could be a tough team this year too. I mean, J- well, Jim Herbert's Herbert like was hurt before the game and then got hurt again. Yeah, got... that didn't look good. Um, but no. that team really just is this kind of built the same way the Steelers are, right? Uh, to an extent, run the ball and play good defense, and that's and kinda... Rashawn Slater got hurt too. Yeah, that's not like... good. That's not good for them. Um, yeah, he tried coming back out and like he le- he played like three plays and he had no strength in that yeah. arm. And I I was not good either. Joe Alt though has literally been tossing dudes. He is yeah. he is welcoming other people to the NFL. It is yeah. it's kind of awesome to watch him. Um I knew he was a large dude, but like watching him play in the NFL where I was like, Oh, he's larger than most of these dudes in the NFL. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, next we had Denver beating Tampa Bay, which was kind of shocking to me. Uh, not even beating, just like they beat the brakes off of it. Yeah. Yeah, they did. Um, and it it looked like Tampa Bay, like I expect Tampa Bay to bounce back big this week. Uh, I think they play Philly this week, uh, which is kind of interesting, but, um, yeah, they, they beat them real bad. I, I, I did not pick Denver to win that game at all. Um, the Rams, I mean, they, they beat up on the 49ers in just a brutal way that I also did not expect. Um, it's the Kyle Shanahan up 10 points in the fourth quarter special. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> woof, woof. Um, yeah. Yeah. There's, there's some real issues with the 49ers right now that like big time, big time, yeah. man. Um, and it's not just the injury piece. Like on defense, I think one of their defensive tackles is out for the year now. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's man, just really Not rough. Great. Har- yeah, uh, Hargrave, I think his name is. Um, yeah. But anyhow, uh, kind of funny that we're talking about the Niners because when we talk about the pulser of the week, I don't know who you had, but I had to pick uh, Jennings out of San Francisco. Man, he just he was awesome, right? Eleven catches, one hundred seventy-five yards, and three touchdowns, like. A huge step up with Debo, Kittle, and McCaffrey out. Uh, I would have thought some of that would have gone to Ayuk, but Ayuk has been very pedestrian this year so far. Turns out you need the training camp reps. Weird. Yeah. Weird. Shocking. Uh, I don't know. Did you have someone that you wanted to, to shout out? Yeah. Um, for me, it was it was nice seeing Derrick Henry back again. He's my pulser of the week. Oh, God. 25 carries, 150 yards, and just him breaking tackle after tackle. I got to ask you, is there snow in Vermont right now? No. Because that's what... In in New Hampshire either? No, there's no snow in New Hampshire. Because usually that's the stat line that he puts up when snow comes to Vermont or New Hampshire. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, it, yeah it's no, wild. He, there was one point, he, there was a run where he stiffed armed a guy so hard that he just like, I thought the guy that he stiffed armed from Dallas got a concussion. Because he, <laughs> he hit the ground so hard that I was like, Jesus. Yeah. It is good to see Derrick Henry running with like a full head of steam with that. I just, like I said, Baltimore, it's not that I don't like Baltimore as a team. But I feel like they lost so much on the offensive line. And I wonder what it would have looked like had they got Derrick Henry last year. They could have traded for him last year. Yep. And brought him in. And like maybe we're talking about instead of the Chiefs winning a second Super Bowl, maybe Baltimore being the Super Bowl champs. I don't know. But. Derrick Henry's a stud, man. Like, I just, I don't know. It really would have been nice to see, but. Yeah, I, I agree. All right. Uh, well, let's let's do this. We're going to cover our week four game before we wrap up here. Uh, I We got New Orleans at Atlanta. And I, I feel, why not stick with the NFC South? Um, Atlanta, listen, they're, get, they're getting two points. The over-under is 42 and a half. But I just, the reason I wanted this one, man, I just absolutely love this divisional matchup. There's a lot on the line for both teams here. I mean, New Orleans, they're trying to hold on to their lead. Atlanta's trying to climb back up the division. Um, I, I just think there's a lot to be happy about in this game. Um, and it, plus, it includes your favorite guy, man. Literally, your, he's back. Yeah, your favorite back, quarterback, baby. man. So He's uh, back. So what what did you want to say? Uh, you know, you could talk about New Orleans or Atlanta, whichever one you want to want to dive into first here. Um, I think that, like, it's a weird game. That that Saints Eagles game was a weird game. Like you look at that game and you're like, if you just blindly looked at the stats without looking at the score, and you're like, boy, Jalen Hurts threw for 311 yards. You're like, wow, they must have won going away. No, he had one, he had no touchdowns, one interception, four sacks. Like, yeah. uh, Saquon Barkley bailed them out. And like New Orleans, like if you look, you're like, wow, Alvin Kamara had almost had over 120 all-purpose yards. Yeah, cool. Like, you would have thought this New Orleans one going away. Like, Carr just looked – he looked like the old Carr, and that meant, like – and the rap has always been if you get pressure on him, that's all you got to do. And that's what Philly did. Philly just got the pressure on him. Like, they didn't result in a lot of sacks, but, boy, they – he threw a lot of balls away because, like, they were coming – like, guys like Jalen Carter were coming on him in a hurry. Yeah. Uh, I, I'll tell you – I I kind of took a, just a different point from, from that Philly game. I was kind of impressed that he left there only giving up one sack and throwing one pick. Because yeah, me too. Th- that defense, they look better than they were last year. They were lacking a lot last year. But, I mean, he's he's played quite a year so far. But I, I, I just want to push back on the, the pressure on him thing because I think any quarterback, if you get pressure on them, isn't going to be the same. They, they're just not. Uh, the greats, like you – like the great, like you talk about, like think about like Mahomes, Brady, Peyton Manning. But, but those, those are dudes, like, when Manning got pressure on him, he he made mistakes. Even Brady, man, like I remember that. Oh yeah, that's that's the best ways to do it. Mahomes, I've yet to see him really have that kind of like he makes mistakes. Yeah. He'll throw picks, but I don't know. Like he seems to scramble out of pressure pretty decently. Um, they do a really good job yeah. of being able to protect him. So it's. It's difficult to see that, but but I think to an extent, there's some people that look much worse when you get pressure on them, uh, yeah. and Derek Carr might be one of those guys. Um, I will say this though: New Orleans defensively is really good. Yes, and that's it. I think that's the re- that I mean that honestly was the reason they kept they were in that game. Yeah, Barkley was torching them, but like they couldn't they couldn't do much else. Philly, on God, offense. he looks good like, too. Bar- yeah. Bar- oh, and Goddard looks good. Um, yeah. yeah, Goddard definitely but, did. Um, uh, but yeah, no, their New Orleans defensively is is where it's kind of at with them. So, well, this is kind of the interesting thing because I wanted to kind of look forward and see what what they have in the future coming here. Their their next five games for New Orleans, they play at Kansas City, Tampa Bay, Denver, at the Chargers, and then at Carolina. Now, those are some. Decent games for them to be playing. Kansas City, not really. Uh, but Denver's got a good defense. The Chargers appear to have a good defense. Tampa Bay is kind of a wild card right now, but it's a divisional game. Carolina. I actually, I think Kansas City, like, 
I think that there enough has been shown on them this year defensively. There's there's kind of a blueprint to get to them defensively. Mm-hmm. Now you got to play a perfect game against them defensively for four quarters, but that, there's a blueprint. because yeah. Mahomes has looked pedestrian this year. Well, maybe this is the way. This is what we see, right? Maybe maybe New Orleans is able to pressure him this week, and then from that point on, it's it's rough. Um, yeah. But Atlanta, look at at their next five games, and there's a reason I'm doing this. But the next five games for Atlanta, listen, they play Tampa Bay at Carolina, Seattle at Tampa Bay, and then Dallas. Um, but after those five games, both of these teams meet again. And I'm yeah. curious to see how much they're going to grow in the meantime because we're going to have a very good idea of the landscape of this division. We're going to be halfway through the season at that point. Uh, being uh, able are to we going to have a good landscape on this division? I, we, I, you can tell me any of these four teams will win this division. I'll be like, okay, sure. Well, yeah, I think we'll have a much better idea at that point yeah. uh, because they will have played each other multiple times. So some of these teams are going to have to lose, right? And now yeah. we say that, but watch them all be four and five or five and four at that point. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it it's going to kind of determine on, you know, it, it's going to depend on how they play each other and, and who ends up winning those games. Um, with Atlanta, I just, and I know we kind of touched on them a little bit before, but I do like what I've seen this team from this team in the last two weeks. Not so much in the first week when they were playing Pittsburgh, but uh, it does seem promising some of the things they can do. The defense definitely looks improved from from the previous year. Adding Justin Simmons really helps them. And I, I think, you know, obviously he gets the pick on Mahomes, which I heard a weird statistic about that, that he's picked off Patrick Mahomes in his last four or five games in a row that he's yeah. played him. That's it's wild. At this point. Yeah, and that's wild, man. There's no guys that usually do that. Um, but I don't know. I, I expect it to be a good game. Both teams are going to try to run the ball well. Both teams have pretty good defenses. I think New Orleans gets the edge in the defense with that. But uh, w- what do you see as like the big thing that, that could be happening in this game? I think that New Orleans defensively are, are going to be a, a problem for Kirk Cousins. Like, I... Because you can't really run on them, mm-hmm. which like I know Bar- they did. I know Barkley did, but Barkley's one of the best running backs in the league, and like Bijan's good, but like hasn't really done anything enough to be like, ooh, yeah. So I, I, I really think that I really think with New Orleans, I think they're gonna make a lot of problems for Atlanta defensively, and I think this is gonna be a low scoring game. I, I feel like people forgot that Chase Young signed here in the off season. I did. Yeah, I did till about five minutes ago when I looked up who else played defense for New Orleans. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, yeah, that guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. So l- l- let me ask you, with that going on, what, what who do you have winning this game? Uh, I have I have New Orleans winning this game, twenty to seventeen. Ooh. Okay. So yeah. I actually decided to go the opposite. I went Atlanta, and I went twenty four seventeen. Now I think that's kind of adventurous considering New Orleans defense, but. Yeah. Uh, I I think it's going to be a, a, a little a little different. So, you uh, believe in Mr. Cuckins? Yes, I do. I I do. I do. I I've got faith in him. So, um, all right, man. I think that wraps it up for NFL. Did anything else you wanted to mention today? No, that's that's pretty much it. Like I said, weird. Uh, NFL's just getting weirder and weirder, man. It and, is. Uh, yeah, it sure is. Well, uh, the trivia question that we had. Uh, last week was which team in Major League Baseball has not had a manager of the year? Uh, you want to lay it on them? Good old Milwaukee Brewers. Yeah, Milwaukee yeah. Brewers. So uh, interesting for that one. And I, I was kind of curious because they had um, some some very long field goals that people have been attempting recently in the first few weeks of the NFL. Some long ones made. I think uh, Fairbain ended up knocking five fifty yarders and. Uh, uh, four yeah, that, fifty, that Bears game. Four fifty yeah, yarders Bears in that game. Yeah, yeah, just he was a stud. Um, but it kind of got me thinking, like, what was the longest field goal ever attempted? So I, I did a little bit of research. I had to look this one up on my own. But uh, that's that's what the question is. What is the longest field goal ever attempted in the NFL? And the guy that attempted it, for the record, uh, that dude had a leg. Yeah, and like. If you watch the clip, he kicks into the wind. And I think if he like did if he either had no wind or slight wind with him, he could have made that. Yeah. Possibly. Yeah. 
possibly. Speaking for sure. of, there was a kid in college this weekend who booted a 64 yarder for Temple. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, the guys, uh, it's Maddox, and I'm going to butcher his last name. It's like uh, Trujillo, I think, is his last name. But yeah, dude booted a 64 yarder. He may have just gotten himself drafted. That's, I don't uh, know. Yeah, I I feel like the new norm is if the new forty yard field goal fifty is the new forty yard field goal. Yeah, yep. These guys yeah. are just it, it's incredible to watch some of them kick. Um, yeah. But uh, I think that wraps it up for this week. So we are going to be back next week. Uh, we'll give you some Major League Baseball postseason coverage, uh, and you know because that's going to be finalized, and we should have an idea of what teams made it, what teams didn't. Um, or at least very close to that. Uh, we'll be ready to break it all down for you, but we are also going to be digging in a tiny bit on week four of the NFL. We'll cover just yeah. a little bit. But I uh, just wanted to say, you know, another good show. Love you, brother. Yeah. And uh, I will catch you next week. All right. I love you, man. Peace. All right. Peace.